Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're discussing another legend of judo, a first generation Olympian or one of the first judokas that competed in the 1964 Olympic Games, Doug Rogers. Doug Rogers, I've mentioned him very briefly in my Isao Inokuma video talking about how he won the Olympic Games and in the finals he went up against uh, Doug Rogers. Doug Rogers is very well known for not only participating in the first Olympic Games but also uh, the documentary you are watching here in front of you called Judoka. So uh, he is a very accomplished man not only in Judo but in another career and we're gonna see that but uh, his training, his travels, all this stuff, it's what makes him, in my opinion, legendary. Not just that he participated uh, in the Olympic Games. So, Doug Rogers was born as Alfred Harold Douglas Rogers on January 26 in Nova Scotia, Canada. So, he is Canadian. And he, like I said, he was uh, one of the first to compete in the Olympic Games and also the first uh, Canadian to ever win an Olympic medal in judo so he was also known to have trained with masahiko kimura so uh, he arrived in japan in 1960 he was just at the age of 19 and he had the intention of working and becoming one of the best judokas and even before that uh, while growing up in ontario he had a very strong build he was very athletic even competing in hockey championships so uh, as you know Canada is very famous for hockey and he was one of the top players of his generation so he had a very strong build and also he used it for judo but his love was for judo so he traveled to Japan specifically for judo so at the age of 15 uh, he joined the uh, judo club at the Montreal YMCA uh, so his sensei told him that uh, he should go into a better dojo the uh, Montreal Saido Khan Dojo because where he was training there was nothing left for him he was just too good so he continued practicing and training judo in high school and winning the brown belt national championship in 1958 and the following year when he became a black belt he became the black belt uh, eastern canada champion so uh, he was accepted to go to mcgill university one of the finest universities in the world but at the same time he was accepted to go to the Kodokan and reside there but nonetheless he decided to go to the Kodokan this is how much love he had for judo so uh, while he was training at the Kodokan uh, a lot of people would come in from multiple universities like uh, uh, Takushoku or the uh, police academy the Tokai University all of them would come in and out uh, visit the Kodokan on a weekly uh, basis and this is how he met the legendary Masahiko Kimura the famous documentary you're watching here in front of you uh, is when he was training with him so Kimura was the coach of the uh, Takudai University uh, and he Kimura himself was one of its graduates so uh, he was like I said one of the best and, and thus the Olympic Committee of Canada chose him to become a representative of Canada for the Tokyo Olympics um, and thus Rogers competed in the Tokyo Olympics of 1964 as you all know he won silver medal uh, against Isao Inokuma so this is one of his accomplishments so uh, after the Olympics uh, he trained full-time with uh, Kimura at the Tokuda. He was no longer training at the Kodokan. And in the summer of 1965, he participated in the All Japan University Championship. And keep this in mind, he was the first non-Asian to ever compete in this and also leading his team for the win. So he was not just... Uh, in the Olympics and on the national level but also in Japan being the first non-Asian to ever compete in the All Japan Championship and winning uh, bring the winners pennant back to Takudai because Takudai University had lost it for several years and this is all under the supervision of Masahiko Kimura so uh, they had a very close relationship together uh, Rogers saw Kimura as his father 
They stayed in touch up until his death of, in 1993. But, uh, however, uh, he went back to Canada. But as a side note, Kimura uh, was a very physical judoka, as many of you know, and also de demanded a lot of physical fitness. And he would train them a lot in uh, uh, fitness alongside judo, strong style of judo. But nonetheless, uh, different from all the other Japanese, Kimura was a bit unique when it came to etiquette. He wasn't that strict uh, for the rituals. Sometimes they would say that um, he would arrive on the mats in sweatpants and he would only wear his judo gi unless he needed to uh, show a technique or uh, really spar with his students. Uh, there's also another story that I'll probably cover it on another video where Kimura came to the class uh, intoxicated or drunk and proceeded to teach the class while he was drunk. So that's a story for another day if you want me to cover it. So uh, Kimura uh, urged Rogers to stay uh, at the Tokudai and train with him, but he wanted to go back to Canada and he wanted to have like uh, a career that has nothing to do with being an athlete. He actually wanted to be a pilot and uh, he got his license at the age of 16. So uh, after the summer tour at the Tokudai team, uh, visiting many universities and competing, Rogers left Canada, I'm sorry, left Japan uh, in the summer of 65. So one summer after the Olympics, and uh, he went back carrying the winner's penance that he won with the All Japan. So. Uh, Doug Rogers kept on competing and he won two gold medals at the Pan American Games or the uh, like North and South uh, American continent uh, where they would have their own games. He won that two times. Uh, also, he got fifth place at the 1972 Olympics. Uh, 1970, 1968, judo did not have Olympic Games, but in 1972, he got fifth place. Uh, but that be that was because he would spend many hours uh, in the cockpit or drive uh, flying planes, and also he did not have Kimura as his teacher anymore. So someone who is working as a full-time pilot and also not having Kimura and trying to uh, make it on his own as a judoka and winning fifth place in the Olympics, that in my opinion is. Uh, a great accomplishment, nothing to be taken any lightly, even though he did not win a medal. Nonetheless, uh, be working as a pilot and an Olympian, today that would never happen in a million years. So uh, he retired uh, from becoming a pilot or being a pilot and he got married and had kids and remained involved in judo uh, as a teacher in uh, British Columbia. So. Uh, and he recently passed away on July 20th this summer. So this year is probably one of the worst years for so many reasons. Um, he passed away as a Rokudan or Six Dan red and white belt. Uh, and he was acknowledged by the Kodokan. So he's not like, uh, like an IJF or uh, like the Canadian Federation black belt, but rather the Kodokan uh, he learned a lot there and spent uh, a lot of time there. Not only that, he also spent it in uh, a Japanese university. So uh, there's no doubt that he was one of the greatest uh, and also one of the best. So I figured a story or a video about him is needed because he is one of the legends of modern judo. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below and please uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have uh, exclusive content just for the patrons, uh, just to show my appreciation for their support. And if you have anything else to add, like I said, uh, the comment section is wide open. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.